Bonjour! Buenos dias! Magandang umaga! Welcome to my Chamber of Chakras and thank you for joining me on another episode of Astro Affirmation for July 12th, 2024. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, weekend. Woo! Yes, it's amazing how time is flying right now. Is it because we as a society is becoming more and more conscious of our oneness with God? That with the Lord, one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. That's what it says in the Bible, BTW. In 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9, the whole verse says this in the New Living Translation. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. There's this thing on my lip. Anyway, repent means to turn your ego inward to the core of your being the tabernacle of God in the sacred heart of Jesus, the unconditional love of God for humanity. Yes, ego seeking outward and never finding is madness. Stop the insanity and be still. Be silent, go inward and meditate to commune with the source of your being. Then you will know the truth and the truth set you free. As freedom from identity, labels, titles, is in that sacred space between your thoughts, the origin and final destination of your consciousness where there is no sense of self, just a state of being. Yes, the magic circle of my mandalas, hello, right? The origin of creation, yes. The way is pointed out to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. Yes, the light of the world is within you, within me, within us. The kingdom of God is within us. The real you is within you. The real me is within me, you dig? Yes, Friday vibes with the frequency of Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, and pleasure. Friday is named after Frigg and Freya, who I believe to be one and the same. Frigg is the older version of Freya. Frigg is the married with children one, while Freya is the single lady. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, put your hands up, put your hands up, put a ring on it, put your hands up, put your ring on it. <laughs> Beyonce, 2008. <laughs> boom, boom, pow. Because I'm 308 and she's 2000 late. <laughs> Bep, B-E-P, a.k.a. Black Eyed Peas, 2009. That was the year, 2009, was the year that I had my hysterectomy. Oh, yeah, after five cesarean deliveries, no, actually six. I had six kids. <laughs> yes, after six cesarean deliveries, 
my uterus called it quits. Oh yeah, it was, it was bleeding internally. I was like having these fainting spells every day until I got my uterus out. Long live Queen Uterus. I asked my OBGYN to save it for me in a jar like my mother did. Yeah, my mother um, also had her kids all C-section and she had a hysterectomy as well and she saved her uterus in a jar filled with formaldehyde and kept it in her bedroom in a secret place and she would show it to us to you know let us know that was our baby house where we were living inside of her tummy before we were born but anyway my OBGYN said no I couldn't take it with me so she took a picture of the front and back side of it and I have those pictures in my youngest child's baby snapbook Zachary Z for short his baby snap books like a little book with all snapshots of when he was born yeah I showed them to you guys in one of my previous videos yeah it's kind of gross but anyway Friday right <clears throat> the energy is all about that song by Johnny Kemp in the late 80s, right? Just got paid Friday night, party hunting, feeling right, body shaking all around. No one thinks when I'm getting down, check the mirror, I'm looking fine. Round up the posse, jump in my ride. Radio rockin', Monster Jam, feel the rhythm, pump up the sound, you feel me? Oh yeah, Friday is my day to sleep in and have breakfast in bed, relaxing in the romantic energy of Venus, goddess of love that you are, surely the things I ask. Can't be too great a task. Yes, that earthy, homey, caring, and nurturing feeling of a mother and home. And now that I'm retired, I can focus all that love on myself. Me, myself, and I. Hala. In loving myself and loving myself some more, I'm able to think and feel more about the people that I care about. Like the man, for instance, his birthday is coming up. This coming Monday, July 15th is his birthday. And I've been giving him gifts every day since Father's Day. Yeah, whenever he gets home from work, there's a surprise on his desk. Yes, a present and he's all, where did this come from? And I'd be like, happy Father's Day or happy birthday. <laughs> then he'd put them on and show me how perfectly it fits him. Yeah, and last night I gave him a white built cool baseball hat and it's moisture wicking. So what that means is that when he sweats, the fabric of the hat pulls his perspiration from his skin and pushes it out to the outside of the hat, which cools his head as the moisture evaporates quickly. Yeah. In addition to that, I got him his favorite summer shirts to wear. And they come in three, three in a pack multicolored white gray and black can you guess what it is yes you guessed it wife beaters oh yeah cotton tank tops you know i've always wondered why they're called wife beaters yeah so i googled it and i found out 
that it originated from medieval times. Did you know that? Yes. The chain mail. You know the chain mail that the knights, aka warriors of medieval times, would wear under their armor as a shirt? That is called chain mail, but they also referred to it, they called it waif beaters to protect the soldier's body from penetration by sharp objects, you know, like a spear or a sword or an arrow, right? It's called waif beaters. Yeah, waif is a person who's helpless, right? A person who's abandoned and in dire straits, right? So waif beater beats that. It beats abandonment issues, you know, it beats being um, vulnerable because it protects you. Yeah, but that word wife beater turned into wife beater. After a Detroit man beat his wife to death in 1947, and he was wearing a stained cotton tent top, which they call now wife beater. Yes, his name was James Hartford Jr. Yes, <clears throat> and Marlon Brando, the actor, right? He portrayed that image <clears throat> perfectly in his command performance of Stanley Kowalski in the film Streetcar Named Desire. Have you seen that movie? Stella, Stella. He wanted Stella, his wife, to come down after he beat her up. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah. We watched that film as a class in my sophomore year at Claremont McKenna College. It was an assigned reading for my Lit 2 class. Marlon Brando rocked that wife beater shirt back in the 50s. Let me tell you, if you haven't seen the film Streetcar Named Desire, watch it. Watch it before you leave this planet, okay? The archetype of Stanley Kowalski describes the ruling chakra of the day to the T for tank top. Yes, the domineering working class masculine energy who believes in the American dream of freedom and equal opportunity. Yes. So now, having said that, have you guessed what the ruling chakra of the day is? 100% solar plexus chakra. And here's my solar plexus sacralexus mandala once again with its bright yellow and orange color, right? <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Yes, yellow is the light that shines from the third spinning sphere of energy in our spine. The solar plexus chakra. And I'm wearing this yellow blouse with my yellow short. Actually, <clears throat> this is a mini dress that I turned into a blouse. See how this inner material is like a mini dress and then I love this part this part is so flowy right <laughs> just got paid Friday night feeling sexy anyways yes and my yellow neon press on nails hello <laughs> with my cat I make up to match but anyway, we'll talk more about the solar plexus chakra later on. But another thing I got for Demand's birthday is a sky blue swim trunks, sky blue, for clearer communication, right? Sky blue is the color of the throat chakra. Right on, because he's a cancer. He's a cancer man. So it's not easy for him to express his emotions into words, right? As the moon is his ruling planet. It's all internalized, you know. 
it's difficult to externalize. But the moon today is waxing, looking bigger in the sign of Libra. Do I have my Libra symbol here? Uh, I guess I left it out. But you know, the glyph of Libra, right? It's like an equal sign with the hump in the center, right? As the fulcrum. But I picked the glyph that I found on the internet that instead of just one hump, it has two hump and then a point at the bottom of the equal sign for the heart. Because the heart is the fulcrum, right? It's the fulcrum of the seven primary chakras. The center of our core. But I can't find it right now and I don't wanna waste the time. So anyway, Libra, the scales of justice balanced by the heart of love and compassion. And we're feeling peace and harmony as we go with the ebb and flow of our emotions, right? So share your thoughts with those you love and trust today. And, and be, don't be afraid to, to be who you really are. You know, despite what's expected of you. Yeah, share, you know, both sides of the equation equally, okay? You know, don't be like, oh, I don't want to disturb the peace, so I'm just going to be all positive. No, be yourself, be authentic. We have a full moon coming up, not this weekend, but the following weekend, the next weekend. Full moon in Capricorn. Yes, the opposite sign of Cancer. Did you know that? Yes, this is Cancer. And I also left out the glyph for Capricorn. But you know Capricorn is like an N, the horn and the tail. It's got a curly tail. The sea goat, right, is the opposite of cancer. So we're gonna, so the, the moon, based on here on my Ouroboros lunar chart, lunar cycle chart, um, we're approaching the full moon, right? So the moon from the new moon, um, last Friday was it, in cancer, is um, getting bigger. It's approaching the half moon. Okay, and then it's going to be a gibbous moon, and then it will be a full moon. Waxing is what it's called. But yeah, the opposite of Cancer is Capricorn. Have you noticed that each month we have a new moon with the sun in the sign of the season? Okay, and a full moon in its opposite sign. Yeah, it's been happening though. I've noticed that. I just recently recognized that. Now that I'm keeping track of the lunar cycle, yeah, <clears throat> it's another one of those aha moments that I've been having in my old age, but I need to dissect that, you know, dissect the details of, of that even further, because I'm Virgo like that. Another thing I noticed is, the four seasons, you know, winter, spring, summer, and fall are depicted by these 12 signs of the zodiac wheel divided by four, right? Or divided by three, I should say, right? Or whichever, four times three is 12. But there are three signs in one season. For example, Aries starts the spring season and it's got three signs in that season. Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, right? And then um, Cancer. Cancer starts the summer season with Leo and Virgo. And then Libra, where are you Libra? 
Libra is kind of cut off there, starts the fall season with Scorpio and Sagittarius. And then Capricorn, there's the glyph for Capricorn I was talking about earlier. Capricorn starts the winter season with Aquarius and Pisces. Isn't that interesting? And that corresponds to this diagram of spirit. Consciousness from Earth, going from Earth, right, in the east, to air in the north, to the west, the water in the west, and fire in the south. Right? Alternating feminine, masculine, feminine, masculine, alternating feminine and masculine energies. Gosh, it's all connected. Yeah, we're all connected. Everything is all connected. We manifest our thoughts and emotions through our passion. Amazing, right? We manifest earth, our thoughts, air, our emotions, water, with passion, fire. Oh God, it's all connected. And we all have the qualities of every astrological sign in the zodiac wheel, in one form or another right? That's what makes us whole. And that said, let's sing our theme song. In unison, okay? So sing with me. Don't be shy. That way we can lift our spirits as one big happy human family. Here we go. drum because when you beat it, it changes its tone. When you squeeze the body, it changes its tone. Love it. All right, all right, all right. Time for some coffee talk. <laughs> Go grab yourself a cup of whatever and join me and let's spill some tea. Yes. I talked to the sun the other day. I said, son, take it easy on Frank as he works on installing our new AC unit outside. And the sun listened to me. Yeah, it hid behind clouds these past couple of days to shield Frank from its blaze. Yeah, our new cooling system should be up and running by the end of the day. And then Frank be like, just got paid for adding night. <laughs> yeah, I talk to everything. I talk to the birds, the trees, the grass, the air, because they all have their own consciousness. Oh yeah, I talk to my body, different parts of my body, my organs, I talk to it. Well, it's the end of my work week, so 
I'm wrapping up loose ends and putting things on the back burner to simmer and bubble up for another time. Thank God it's Friday, yeah, T-G-I-F. Freaky Friday. <laughs> I'm finna fix me dessert for dinner. Oh yeah. But I'll be working on this crochet project. I showed this to you yesterday. It's called Point Horizon Summer Top. This is the this is going to be the backside of the blouse. Okay, so it's like two two rectangles this size sewn together, the shoulders and the sides. And this is designed by Janika York Carter and taught on YouTube by Chandi Aggie of Expression Fiber Arts. Yeah, you see the body? The, the pattern on the body is different from the pattern of the yoke, right? This is like a diamond pattern and the other is like squares, little squares. But yeah, I completed that first rectangle last night. And so today and over the weekend, I'll be crocheting the front part of the blouse. See, I've already, I've already started the body. I'm using this yarn art yarn called Rose Garden. Isn't it pretty? Perfect color for the summer summer heat yes i love crocheting so much i do i got this month's hooks and needles box yeah i subscribe to hooks and needles see look at those yarn skeins of yarn right look at this color sackle chakra color and heart chakra color. Love the sheen on them, right? They always include something extra, like look at this. What's that? Like little rings. Needle tension rings. And a hook. They always include a hook, too. What size is this? This one is 4.5. Look. Yeah, and then they have like this booklet that shows you how to make different projects. Yeah, I love it. I'm so excited to make Mama Magic 369 happen to those balls of yarn. Okay, so today's color is yellow, as you can see from my wardrobe. And I got, like I said, this is colored mini dress, lemon colored mini dress on with my shorts. And I got my tiger's eye bracelet and earrings on for the solar plexus chakra. You know, tiger's eye is known as the warrior stone. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah because it's said to help people harness their inner strength to overcome challenges. And it helps people feel more grounded and tap into deeper levels of consciousness, which can lead to increased self-confidence, which is all about the solar plexus chakra. So surround yourself with a color yellow today to open, activate, and balance the solar plexus chakra. Yeah. Go outside and bask in the glory of the sun and get solar powered. Taste and see the goodness of God. Like that drink, it reminds me of that Sunny D, right? That orange drink. Taste the power of the sun. Is it jingle, I think? Yeah, remember that commercial? There was a commercial of that with a snowman turning orange and 
Unfortunately, it coincided with the news of a four-year-old girl whose skin turned orange after binging on Sunny D. Yeah, too much beta carotene. She turned orange like a carrot. <laughs> too much of anything is not good because good is in the middle, right? Balanced. Like the moon in Libra, taking the middle way, being the middleman, the diplomat, Christ consciousness, you dig? Mm -hmm. So the solar plexus chakra is the highest of the three lower energy centers of our core, right? So the density of the root chakra and the sacral chakra is digested at the solar plexus chakra for metabolism, okay? For the food, for the body and the soul, burning calories with a fire in the belly, right? Fire is the element of the solar plexus chakra to motivate us to act on our faith. The Bible says faith without works is dead. James chapter 2 verses 17 through 26 says, so you see, faith by itself is not enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, Others have good deeds, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith for you believe that there is one God, good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror, how foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions work together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened just as the scriptures say. Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. You know, <coughs> the solar plexus chakra is in charge of everything from the navel to the breastbone. So from here to here, okay? So if you're having digestive issues, Okay, stomach aches or ulcers or whatever. Your solar plexus chakra may be blocked. Of course, check with your doctor first. But chant the Ram, you know, the mantra for the solar plexus chakra. Ram to cleanse it. Right? The hand position is hands together with all fingers out. Okay, but the pointing forward from the stomach, okay? So, rum, okay? Yes, the solar plexus chakra is called Manipura in Sanskrit. It means lustrous gem in the city of jewels. And I say it's because it's the source of our self-worth our values and our chi, right? The solar plexus chakra controls the, the flow 
of life force energy for our personal power, our strength of will, bravery, courage, self-esteem, and confidence to move our foundation and passion forward. Make magic happen. Shoot, play tennis today. Tennis ball. Yeah, that, not that I do any of that athletic stuff. I use this to uh, massage my back. I put it on the back of the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It hits those, those hidden, you know, nooks and crannies that get in my back. That's what I use a tennis ball for. <laughs> no, but get active. Shoot some hoops. Get active. <clears throat> Move your emotional energy outward to make a better world, to heal yourself and others, okay? But like I said, I'm not the athletic type, so especially in this heat, oh, I stay in. Anyway, the symbol for the solar plexus chakra is here on my chakra shawl. It's a yellow lotus flower symbolizing spiritual awakening with 10 petals representing 10 blocks to remove from this spinning sphere of energy, okay? So that vitality can flow freely and smoothly up and down our spine, right? To the rest of the chakras. The triangle in the center is a tetrahedron, the sacred geometry for fire, its element, right? Let's see if I can find my paper model here. On the tetrahedron. Where are you, Tetrahedron? Uh, it's hiding. Doesn't want to be seen today. But um, <clears throat> a Tetrahedron is, <clears throat> excuse me, a pyramid with four sides. And all four sides are triangular. Okay, so the base is triangular. And then from that base, there are three more triangles that make the pyramid, okay? <clears throat> but life is about balance and moderation. Don't you agree? Yeah, I think it's the key to happiness in this life. To consume and produce in equal measures, right? And in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Uh -huh. The Beatles, that's called The End by The Beatles, 1969, in their Abbey Road album. Love the drums on that one. Yeah, 1969. I was only eight years old at the time that that song was released the year when I found my power to be a leader. Yes, as the eldest of five kids, I was tasked with the responsibility for my four younger siblings. And back then, my immature self, I was only eight years old, you know, it, I learned um, to rule by fear, <laughs> to ensure compliance and desired results. Yes, I was Machiavellian because that's how I was taught, right? But I, as I matured into the person that I am today, raising six kids, I learned that ruling by faith and love is more effective. Yes. It's lasting. So today, show your faith by demonstrating your love to yourself and others. <coughs> <coughs> I'm nursing this cold. <coughs> I took a Benadryl early, earlier today because I'm experiencing itchiness in my throat and my lungs. So I'm a little bit drowsy but I'm okay. I got some coffee. Yeah. Today's a perfect day to pamper yourself and indulge in the pleasures of life. 
get a makeover, upgrade your beauty routine, you know? Yeah, it's spa day. Get a facial and a massage, you know? It's a day of chillaxing and having fun. Yes. Now it's time for Reading Corner. When I read from this book, The Secret Teaching of Jesus Christ by Jill L. Warner. Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. Friends to know, ways to grow. A reading rainbow, I can be anything. Take a look, it's in a book. A reading rainbow, a reading rainbow, yes. Thank you for singing with me, I hope you did. It's fun to sing that song, Reading Rainbow. Did y'all watch that with your kids? I watched it as a kid. <laughs> I'm still a kid. But anyway, let's pick up where we left off. But I think we should burn this Nug Champa incense before we start reading, okay? That way we can get rid of negative thoughts and emotions before we read from that book. Yes. We must cleanse our space inside and out Jai Guru Deva Om Shining One remove the darkness in our space and lighten up the density in our soul to raise our spirits and rise to connect to your divine realm of your heart's conditional, unconditional love and compassion. I ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen and amen. Yes. Okay. So let's read. Surrendering to God in your heart is the most important aspect of any prayer regardless of what words you choose. Surrender is mind meeting heart. In this meeting, your mind stops and your ego vanishes. It is the deepest humility that opens your heart to the eternal compassion of God. As Jesus exemplifies, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Luke 18, 11 through 14. Ultimately, the perfect prayer of God is a prayer that uses no words at all. A prayer that uses no words simply means that you are resting in the heart of God, in the silence before any word arises. Silence is true prayer and the vessel of all prayers. Silence is God. It is what comes before and after any word and contains the infinite grace of God. That's the sacred space I've been talking about. Right? It's the spirit who knows the spirit of man and the spirit of God. And it groans with words that can't be deciphered. But it knows what it is that you need to pray for. Okay, let me continue. Jesus said, truly I say to you, 
whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Mark eleven twenty three, Prayer unlocks the unlimited power of God. It lives in the silence of the heart and requires absolute faith in God, free of all doubt, trusting completely in the unlimited power of God, which is within you. Hello. Prayer is certain. It is open. Doubt is closed. If you try to remove doubt, doubts will continue to arise. To free yourself from doubt, simply doubt the doubter. Doubt the doubter. Who is it who doubts? This question returns your mind to God. In his eternal light, there is no doubter. Doubter ceasing, no doubt remains. This is true faith complete and total absence of doubt, absolute certainty. Prayer lives in the heart, free of both the doubt and the doubter, in the eternal silence of God. Silence is the vessel and forgiveness is the heart of prayer. Forgiveness releases you from the past and opens your heart to the light of God. If you do not forgive, your heart is closed to the light of God. Jesus explains, If you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Matthew 6.15 If you do not forgive, then you cannot be forgiven. This is the universal law of creation. God always responds to what you are thinking and feeling. If you have not forgiven, you cannot be forgiven simply because the infinite nature of God responds directly to the thought and feeling, because you hurt me, I will not forgive you. Okay? Jesus explains, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother shall be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, shall be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Make friends quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out till you have paid the last penny. Matthew 5, 22 to 26. The altar Jesus is talking about is the heart of God within you. And the gift is your prayer. Okay? Jesus reveals that if you do not forgive, you are locking yourself in a prison of negative thoughts and feelings. The gift you give is the gift that you receive. Jesus is asking you to stop and ask yourself, is this what you want? If you do not forgive, you are asking for what you do not want. You are literally closing yourself off from receiving the joy and freedom of God. It really is that simple. Forgiveness is the heart of any prayer, but it can also be one of the most difficult things to face in life. It is not always easy to forgive, especially when someone has hurt you physically, emotionally, or both. Part of the reason forgiveness is perceived as so difficult derives from misconceptions that you might have about what forgiveness really means. What does Jesus want you to know about forgiveness? And why is forgiveness an important aspect of following Jesus on the razor's edge of freedom? All right, that ends the chapter on prayer. Next week, we'll start the chapter on forgiveness. Okay, yes, oh my gosh.
We're halfway through the book, guys. I hope you're liking it. <clears throat> but make time to pray, meditate, and read the Bible every day. Exit the eternal, the external world, okay? How to exit the external world? Close your eyes. Shut your eyes from seeing it, right? Yeah. Exit the external world for a moment by closing your eyes in the silence of your secret place. Tabernacle of God in your core. Get in the gap between your thoughts and connect with your higher self in God. Chant the mantras for all seven chakras. Lam, vam, ram, yam, hum, sham, aum. Okay. To clear the central column of light in your core. Right? For the kundalini to rise from the root to the crown and circulate the rainbow bridge, right? Within you and without you, radiating outward, all around you, uniting you with everything that there is to bring heaven on earth, right? Here's some Bible passages to reflect on today. Deuteronomy 31, six, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases strength. First Corinthians 4.20 for the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. Ephesians 3, 19 through 20. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now, all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. I end this show with the ringing of my solar plexus mini meditation bowl. Here we go. <clears throat> Ram 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 Yes Hope you all have a magical weekend. I'll see you Monday. And as always, I honor God in you and me. Namaste.